Uh, may we have the next question from the brother in the back? Hello. Uh, Mr. Jakir, this is Aurora Vivek. Being a Hindu, over here, I'm not over here to put any controversy, but I have a question. Aham Brahma, Aham Vishnu, Aham Mahesh, that was called by someone of my very good friend. Eventually, he was telling us about Quran and Bible. But what my question is, I have got just four questions to ask to you. Number one. Most important question first. Okay, I, if I, there is time, we would definitely permit you another no question. No issues. No issues. Because if everyone I, asks two, three questions, if I as a coordinator allow, I think we are not being fair to the other questioners. Fine. Thank you. I got your point. Just one question. As though, Mr. Jake, you were talking about Genesis version and everything, I just have a put one to question. If you are making a comparison between the Quran and Bible, why not a comparison between the Vedas, the Quran, and the Bible? They are versatile in each every manner. One each eventually is cooperated with each other. God, the Almighty is one. Rather, it called be as Allah, it's called by Bhagwan or Jesus. Why not make it sure all of the people should say, why not only one? Brother asked a very good question, very important question, very practical question. When I'm making comparison between Quran and the Bible, why not make comparison between Quran, Bible, Veda, etc.? And he said that why don't you follow all? And that is what I tell the people that for the Quran says. Come to common terms as between us and you. Brother, what I tell every human being, any, whether it be a Hindu, Christian, Muslim, Jew, Sikh, Parsi, no problem. I tell them a simple thing which everyone will agree. At least agree that one scripture is the word of God. No one would mind doing that. The Hindu would say, okay, fine, Veda is the word of God. Christian will say, Bible is the word of God. Muslim will say, Quran is the word of God. The Sikh, he will say, my Granth is the word of God. The Parsi, he will say that my Avesta is the word of God. No problem. Now, put all these scriptures together. What is common? Let us agree to follow that. What is not common, we can discuss that tomorrow. Right? I only ask them one thing. What is common in all these scriptures, let us agree to follow. Because Sorry to is... interrupt you, sir. Sorry to interrupt you. Brother, please let me complete the answer. Uh, and please, after please, I, please, please, please. After, I finish, after I finish the answer, what you want, you can say. Maybe what you want to ask, I will give in the answer. Correct? I go in stepwise. Right, sir. The mathematical, if you want to solve a problem, if I directly give you the answer, you won't understand. I have to go stepwise. One, two, three, four. Fine. Exactly. So my only request is, what is common in all the scriptures, let us follow. What is not common, we'll discuss later on. Fine? No, common in all the scripture is that God is one. So let us believe God is one. We say that God is one. Didn't I say that? Ikkam evidityam. God is only one without a second. Bible says that. Gospel of Mark, chapter number 12, verse number 29. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 6, verse number 4. Shama Israel, O Adnail Hadnai Khad. Your O Israel, the Lord, our God is one. The Jews say that, the Christians say that. The Quran says, Kulwallawad. Say there's God one and only. So where does this Trinity come in between? Where does this Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva come in between? Where? I didn't believe in that. Brother, let me complete. There is no Brahma mentioned in the Quran. There is no Shiva mentioned in the Quran. There is no Jesus mentioned in the Quran that is God. It's mentioned in the Quran is a messenger of God. The Bible also doesn't say that Jesus is God. It is the false reading of the Christians. So how come you are saying that it doesn't matter whether Allah, Jesus, it matters. The Quran says, in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 110, Kulidullah avidur rahman ayya matadu fala al asma husna. Say call upon him by Allah or by Rahman. By whichever name you call upon him, to him belongs the most beautiful names. It should be a beautiful name. It should not conjure up a mental picture. It should be a true name. You can't give a false name to God. You can't insult God. You can't belittle God. Some people tell me, what difference does it make? You call Pani, you call water, you call Tani, no problem. If you call Pani, you say in Hindi. Tani, you say in Tamil. Moya or Mai, you say in Arabic. Jal, 
You say in Hindi, no problem. You can call by any name. But then, one morning, my friend comes and tells me, every morning I have water. But after I have water, the doctor told me I have a lot of water. But I start vomiting. I said, why? No, the water is yellowish. The doctor told him to have water. He has every morning one glass of water. The water is yellowish. 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 Then I realized what he's talking is not water, it is urine. <laughs> you can't call urine as water. The definition of water. You can call Tani, you can call water, you can say Rahman, you can say Rahim, you can say Karim, you can say Rab. But you can't call God as man. You can't call God as insan. Therefore, you can't call water as urine. And the touchstone for theology is Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4. What I mentioned in Surah Ikhlas. So what I'm going to tell, that what is different, keep it aside. Nowhere does the Quran say that Jesus is God. Nowhere does the Quran say Mahesh is God. So keep Mahesh out. Yes, if you say Brahma. Brahma is a Sanskrit word which is known as a creator God. So if you say creator, I've got no problem. If you say God is a creator, I've got no problem. Because Quran says that God is Khalik, creator. But then you say this creator has got four heads. He has got four hands. Then you're giving an image to God. You're going against Veda. Of that God, there is no image. I do believe so. Sir. Call him creator. But you say that creator is a man, then he's not God. I do have an apology. Be the creator. So same way, brother, if you see my video cassette, similarities between Islam and Hinduism, inshallah, most of the carries will be answered. Hope that answers the question. Uh, I do apologize. What I was specifically want to say to you, Mr. Jakir, I do not want to get into controversy over here. Uh, my thing is this, Mr. Jakir was telling appropriately right what exactly was over here the people is wanting. What I wanted to know, basically, exactly what he, the speeches he is providing to us, we are over to listen him. Exactly the renaissance, the renaissance, the creator of the world, rather it should be counted as Allah, Bhagwan, or the Jesus, should not be created himself. It has to be materialized with differentiations. Thank you. Brother, if you had heard my answer, you call him Allah, I've got no problem. You call him Bhagwan. As long as what is the meaning of Bhagawan? According to Rajnish, Bhagawan means something else. I don't know whether you know. According to Rajnish, what definition Rajnish gave, then I cannot believe God is Bhagawan. So what we have to realize, we have to believe in the concept of the Almighty, the Creator, the Maker. If you know that concept, and the word should be chosen correct. It should not be a wrong word. And what word is common between the scriptures, we have got no objection. But Jesus, as you again mentioned, is not common in the Bible and the Quran. Quran says Jesus is the prophet of God. And even the Bible says the prophet of God. But the Christians, they misunderstand that Jesus claimed divinity. So if the Christians, they misunderstand the Bible, why should I agree with the misunderstanding? I have to clarify that. I have not come here to create a controversy. I have come here to come to common terms. Come to common terms. I have been asking you.